Hi, I'm Becca, and this is my husband, Gabe. That's me. Welcome to the podcast celebrating Jack Russell Terrier dogs. And all the joys of companionship with canines of every kind. Each week, we'll explore all the heartfelt, humbling, and hilarious stories that only dog parents can truly relate to. We're Jack Russell Parents. Hey friend, we have a special announcement. In addition to our usual Monday podcast, every Thursday starting this week, we'll be dropping a Zoomy so A what? A quick, overly excited midweek pick you up. In these Thursday Zoomy sodes, aka mini episodes, we'll feature can't miss dog stories from entertainment and social media. So be sure to tune in every Thursday for your extra dose of doggy delight. <laughs> We want to take this time to say thank you to all of you listeners for joining our community of dog lovers and supporting our podcast. You are subscribing, talking about the show with your friends, sharing on your social media, and giving us five-star reviews. We are so incredibly grateful. Your encouragement and engagement keeps us going each week. Yes, thank you so much for all you do. You add so much value to our show, and it's a privilege and a blessing to get to know so many other passionate, loving dog parents. And because we know what it is like to be so in love with your furry companion that you want to share them with the world on social media, today we are going to highlight a few dog Instagram accounts that you are going to want to follow right away. Yeah, I knew we weren't the only ones with social media account dedicated to our dog, but I just I had no idea how many there are. I mean, there's it seems it's like millions. I guess. Yes, yes, and I think it's just because dog people love their dogs. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, look at this cutie pie, and look at how much I love them. <laughs> so <laughs> cool. And did you know that there are people that specialize in helping you promote your dog centric businesses and or your dog? Instagram account. Yeah, if you want to do more than just share with your family and friends, or if your fur baby themselves wants to be famous, <laughs> yeah, there are experts that can guide you in that direction. One such expert is the vibrant dog community leader, Tori Mystic, from Wag Wear Repeat. Stay tuned for a special interview with her. But before we do that, let's explore the galleries of some incredible doggy Instagram accounts in our social pups segment. We are going to start with none other than Doug the Pug. Doug the Pug. <laughs> you can find Doug the Pug at it's Doug the Pug. Doug is a pug. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't figured that much out already. <laughs> but when I look at their account, first of all, I love the pictures. They are so vibrant. They have so much color and they are hilarious, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> If you want a good laugh, you got to get over to this page. Okay, in Doug the Pug's Instagram stories, there's several things you can take a look at in there. So they have their merch, super cute t-shirts and stuff all about pugs. And then they have dog toys. They actually have a line of dog toys called Doug the Pug. No joke, y'all. There's pizzas. There's ice creams. I think they're saying that uh, Doug likes to eat uh, donuts. <laughs> donut toys. I would never have guessed. He's so lithe. <laughs> <laughs> but this, is, this stuff is so cute. And they've got a little video of him playing with the toys. And then they also have a line in Claire's. They have some really cute stuff in there. They've got little, they've got actually little stuffed animals of Doug the Pug. He's in a superhero outfit. He's eating a donut. Oh, here he is in a duck costume. These are really cute. <laughs> <laughs> and just scrolling down the page, there's so many pictures of him in outfits, doing various activities. One of my favorite images is probably the one where he's just has this really disgruntled look when they're putting a Furby right next to his face. <laughs> He just <laughs> looks so put out. Get this out of my face. <laughs> and here's to me really the coolest thing or one of the coolest things about Doug the Pug. He His pug sounds, his grunting, his snorting. His baby pig imitations. Yes. They can be found in the new movie that's out, Mitchell's versus the Machines. He is the voice of Manchi. And so... I just was so excited. At first glance, I thought, 
Well, they're just comparing them because the little cartoon character pug of Manchi looks looks like Doug. But no, that Doug's doing a voiceover. He, he's a legit <laughs> movie star now. <laughs> it's so cute. If you've ever spent time with a pug, you know <laughs> what sounds they make. It's very distinctive. Kind of sounds like a little baby pig, but it's a pug. And those sounds are very real in the movie because it's actually Doug the Pug. Yeah. So check out Doug the Pug at It's Doug the Pug for more awesome pictures and entertainment. <laughs> and next we have Manny the Frenchie. Yeah. We are big Frenchie fans. My brother-in-law, Becca's brother, has a Frenchie. I love that little little thing. <laughs> She's so cute. Yeah, her name is Luna. And my brother just loves her. Like, it's his little baby. So Manny the Frenchie is the world's, according to his description, is the world's <laughs> most followed bulldog and philanthro pup. And he is the author of Manny the Frenchie's Art of Happiness. <laughs> he wrote a book about how to be happy. We've got actors we've got writers this is amazing <laughs> so these pictures are just the cutest as well like i mean of course got him dressed up he he likes tacos apparently he also likes friends there's a lot of pictures of him with his friends it looks like maybe and or brothers and sisters and he's just so sweet looking i mean i really can't he's adorable if we got another dog that was not a jack russell terrier it would probably be a frenchie i would think so or maybe a pug it's yeah they're it's those are up. the contenders yeah i think because they also i mean all dogs have personality, but I think these these little ones, the Frenchies and the Pugs, they have a lot of personality too, like Jack Russell's. Yeah, they would they would have to match Carson's energy coming mm -hmm. in. My favorite pictures of many of the Frenchie are when he's laying down, sleeping upside down. His paws are straight up in the air, and his face, like all the wrinkles, are just <laughs> kind of like smushing down into what kind of still resembles a dog face. <laughs> It's just this pile of, pile of wrinkled wrinkles. fur. It's so cute. And apparently he likes to sleep in the bathroom sink, which is also very cute because he's like literally passed out in there. What a cute guy. And the last Instagram account that we want to highlight today is Marley Rose, the JRT. So cute. Yes. Yeah, so that's at Marley Rose underscore the underscore JRT. And Marley Rose is a black and tan Jack Russell Terrier. And <laughs> she is super loving and highly energetic. And her page is managed by her mom, which is so sweet. And her date of birth is April 17th, 2020. Wow. So she's just over a year old. Little baby. So sweet. These pictures are so adorable. Really pretty pictures. Yeah. She is very photogenic. <laughs> very photogenic. Most Jack Russells are. I really feel like Jack Russells have just this very iconic bone structure. You know, anything that's <laughs> really anything that's really fluffy and fuzzy is gonna be cute because it's just it's an fluffy. abundance of fluff, right? Mm -hmm. But Jack Russell's the way they're built is just gorgeous on its own. Yeah. So so we would encourage y'all to come over and follow and like and check out Marley Rose's page and give her some love. All right. So I think it's time for a commercial break. I'm just going to keep scrolling because this is adorable. Yeah. You keep looking at the cuteness and I'm going to go reheat my coffee and we will be right back. <laughs> If your dad is anything like mine, he leads the pack. He is the alpha. He gets the job done. This Father's Day, give him the badge of honor he deserves. With Alpha Dad, Dog Dad, or Pack Leader attire from the Jack Russell Parent Store. My favorite print, of course, is the Jack Russell Dad print because... They may be the bravest dads of all, seriously. <laughs> These awesome prints come on baseball t-shirts, hoodies, and even a coffee mug, your choice. Hey dad, get ready, cause your gift is about to arrive in the mail soon. To join the dog dad squad, check out the rad gift options at jackrussellparents.com. Simply click on shop at the top and place your order. Happy Father's Day to you, dad. Thank you. 
So you might just be getting started or simply thinking about starting an Instagram or social media account for your gorgeous pup. If so, you are in for such a treat. We've got an expert for you today. She was featured on Good Morning America and Good Housekeeping and The Wall Street Journal. She is a dog mom, entrepreneur, blogger, and podcaster. Please welcome Tori Mystic of Wear Wag Repeat. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, Tori. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. So, Tori, how has your Saturday been going so far? Well, it's going great because I I took I have two labs, so I hope it's I'm allowed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I have two Labradors, and so I took them out to our favorite area where they can be off leash and romp around in the creek and get dirty. So now they're sleeping. So I'm set up for a very good Saturday. That's wonderful. That's fantastic. Yeah, I just got on the treadmill today for the first time uh, since I started my New Year's resolution uh, <laughs> back in January. I mean, <laughs> and it's almost summer. It, it counts. <laughs> Anything counts. Good job. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, Carson, he was outside of our gym slash podcast studio and I opened the door and he looks at me like, we couldn't have run outside together. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we should have done what you did this morning, Tori. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's it's hot here. It's it's gotten so hot so fast. It's like going to be 90 degrees. So with my two, they don't really like the heat. So we have to go out early. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. It's getting real hot here in Texas as well. There's so much we want to learn from you today. So Tori, let's get started. Tell us about the inspiration behind your super cool brand, Wear Wag Repeat. Well, I started Wear Wag Repeat as a hobby blog about eight years ago. And I was blogging about my favorite things, which are style and my dogs. And I combined them in a way that I didn't really see anyone else doing at the time. And I was doing fashion posts, but, you know, my dogs were included in everything. And it was kind of unique because, like I said, I have labs. So they're not what you would think of as like a typical fashion dog. Right. (laughs) Much bigger sizes that you have to find for them. Yeah, it's very hard to find (laughs) clothes for them. And so when I was getting started, I I really thought I was going to be like a fashion blogger and going to fashion week and all this stuff. But it turned out that the fashion blogging community was really hard to make connections in. It was really saturated. Then I just kind of stumbled upon the dog blogging world. Some of my posts that were maybe more heavily dog instead of fashion started getting comments from other dog bloggers. And that's how I discovered this whole world. So it's it's really thanks to the other bloggers who commented on my blog and just showed me just how welcoming and kind and cool the dog world is. And the other dog bloggers really inspired me to go this way. And the rest is kind of history. I've just been steady steadily growing it over that whole time. <laughs> and I had I had other jobs during that period. And then two years ago, I actually went full-time with Wear Wag Repeat. Yay. It's been a journey. There's no overnight success story. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's an easy transition into podcasting. I really feel like it's the audiobook version of a blog. You do the same amount of prep and writing and research, and you're just speaking what you would have written down in a blog. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I I was inspired to start my own podcast when I was at a pet blogging conference that unfortunately doesn't happen anymore. But it was like, when I discovered this, I was like, oh my God, this is my people. (laughs) And it was called Blog Pause. Um, And there's something, some of the people from that now run something called All Pet Voices, which is really cool too. But it was at that Blog Pause conference about three years ago when there was a keynote speaker who said, you need to have a podcast. And I went home. uh, It was in, in May of that year. I went home and started researching it and learning how to do it. And I launched my podcast that November. And now I have over 166 episodes. Wow. There's some some solo episodes, but mostly interviews. And I, I interview women in the pet industry. Mm-hmm. So it's been really cool. And you're right. It, it's a perfect compliment to blogging. That's yeah. fantastic. So how can listeners turn their passion for dogs into a career like you did? Is there a few tips that you would like to share? Yeah, absolutely. So in the pet industry, we're really lucky because there's so many different things that you can do. And I would recommend that you kind of figure out what your strengths are in other areas and see how you could apply that to the pet industry. Um, So for me, I'm not a dog trainer. I'm not a veterinarian. I'm not a groomer. I'm none of those things, but I'm able to work in the pet industry because I have a lot of expertise in digital marketing. 
So I can teach other pet people how to market their business online. And obviously I get to utilize my skills in promoting my own blog and my own stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of an example of how I've done it. But in interviewing so many different people on my show, they're all over the place. So there are some people who are really great at sewing and making things and they open an Etsy shop selling dog bandanas or dog accessories. That's one option. There's other things that you can do too, like being a dog walker. If you love to run, some people hate to run like me. (laughs) They might want to hire you to run their dog for them. Oh, that's great. (laughs) Yeah. I think it's, you just kind of have to think about like, what, what are you good at and how could you make that dog related? One of the women who's in my online community, she's out in California and she had a dog hiking business. Um, Before the pandemic, she was running a dog hiking business and the pandemic kind of shut that down. Trails were closed and and people weren't really using their dog walkers and that kind of stuff. So she's also happens to be a talented graphic designer. So she started a new business making templates that other pet businesses can use on their own social media. Great. So she gets to hang out with her own dogs you know, design stuff on the computer and help other pet businesses with her own skill set. So you can pretty much do anything and make it dog related, I think. (laughs) I think so too. And I think we're kind of along those same lines in that uh, Gabe's and my background is acting, writing, that type of thing. And so I think a podcast plays very well into that as well as we like to uh, feature other authors on our podcast. So we tie in the love of books, especially children's literature, to what we do. So I I just love that. I think that's a great approach is to think about what you really love and what you bring to the table. Yeah, thank you. And I think that, you know, a lot of people want to do something that they're passionate about. Yeah. Um, and it's it's easier to be excited about what you're doing if you're if you know that it's helping pets. Absolutely. Because I don't really report to anyone. So <laughs> nice. there's no one saying you have to write this blog post, but I get it done because I'm like, this might help someone and their dog and make their life better. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We've uh, promoted several animal charities recently and we want to continue partnering with them because there's so many people that really have devoted their lives to saving animals' lives and, and enriching so many families. And so it's nice to be able to shout to the hills about what they're doing. Aloha Mama Apparel wants to spread the spirit of aloha. Genesis Beloth, the creator of Aloha Mama Apparel, was born on the mainland and resides in Southern California. But she cherishes her Hawaiian culture and honors the half of her family that lives on the island. She loves being a mama and a designer. At Aloha Mama, they know being a mama is hard work, but it's the best work. That's why they style mamas and kiddos in apparel that is bright and filled with beachy vibes. For the cutest casual attire celebrating the spirit of aloha, go to shopalohamama.com. That's shop, A-L-O-H-A-M-A-M-A.com. Shopalohamama.com. So, Tori, we've kind of focused in on Instagram specifically, and I know a lot of people have started Instagram accounts for their pups because they just adore them so much they want to share them. So what are three ways for an Instagrammer to grow their account? So I have really <laughs> absorbed myself in Instagram and learning how to <laughs> how to grow it. And it's really fun because it changes all the time. It's always fun to learn about the new features and everything. But there are three things that I think you can do that are evergreen things that you don't necessarily have to be up on the trends, but you can just do these things all the time and they're going to help with your account. Number one is um, starting with the basics is having your bio filled out correctly. I see so many people and pet accounts where their bio just has nothing in it or um, it has just a few words and it doesn't really tell you a whole lot about them. And so if someone lands on your profile and you want them to follow you, if you don't really introduce yourself, it's hard to motivate them to click that follow button. 
for pet accounts, I always recommend that you share your pet's name. You might want to share, you know, if it's boy dog or a girl dog, you know, someone might be interested in that. You can share their age. I like to share um, if they have any, you know, special interests or funny quirks or things like that. You know, some dogs are obsessed with water and other ones are ball obsessed. And <laughs> those are kind of just like fun personality quirks that you can add to your bio that will get someone interested. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. One of my dogs, Bert, has epilepsy. And so if I see other dogs in their bio that say they have epilepsy, I'm going to follow them because I want to see what they're doing and how they're handling it. Yeah. Another thing that you can do is um, make sure that you don't post and ghost. Mm. <laughs> this is probably my number one tip because so many people will post on their Instagram account and then close out the app immediately. They like, you know, hit publish and then they peace out. <laughs> That's not the best way to grow your account. So when you do a post, you want to make sure that you hang out there a little bit, comment on some other people's things. Maybe if you used hashtags, click on those hashtags and leave some comments on those posts. And then hopefully if you do get some comments on your own post, you can reply to them immediately. Yeah. The third thing that I think makes a huge impact on your Instagram account is replying to people's stories. Hmm. I love posting on Instagram stories. I love watching Instagram stories, but it is so easy to kind of get stuck in just watching and clicking next, next, next. But when you actually go to the effort to reply to their story, so you just hit the little comment field at the bottom of someone's story and write in or a conversation starter or a question or something like that, that message goes to their inbox. So it doesn't just show up as like a regular notification with all their other notifications. It actually shows up as the DM. Oh. And so I think that is the best use of your time on Instagram. If you're trying to get more engagement and, and create more relationships and, and friendships with other dog people, there's really nothing quite like showing up in their DMS and they'll feel like you really paid personal attention to them. And it's just a great way to develop relationships. That is the best advice, all three of those steps, but especially for me, that last one, because I don't think I quite realized how it worked. So that, I didn't, frankly. Right? I'm still I didn't, confused I didn't with know. how to even make Instagram stories. So I need to, we'll have to pick your brain so, some more some other time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I hope I explained it well. Yeah, absolutely. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you did, did a great. great job. <laughs> you did great. It's just that's a more of a personal thing where I have some marketing experience online as well, but it's all Facebook. I'm a little aged for Instagram. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but we can trade because I know nothing. I'm terrible at Facebook. I avoid it like the plague. So, <laughs> well, perfect. <laughs> What's the most important thing you want listeners to glean from your brand? Wear Wag Repeat is really all about helping women live their best life with their dogs, whether you're a dog mom or you're a petpreneur. I just want to share with people my knowledge so that they can, you know, embrace every moment. That's great. Because, you know, we all know our dogs aren't around as long as we would like them to be. So, um, you know, if you can do more enriching, exciting things that enrich their life and your life, yeah. rather than just doing the same thing every single day, I think that you'll create more memories. I try to encourage people to do things that are maybe a little bit out of their regular routine or, um, you know, outside of their comfort zone, maybe <laughs> so that they can create really great memories with their pet. I love that. And the motto of my dog raising life is when you know better, you do better. That's one of my favorite quotes. Uh, I think it's my Angelou. I think Rebecca put that in our marriage vows, actually. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, do you know better now? <laughs> I, I do. I mean, I'm knowing more every day. <laughs> it, I mean, it's such a simple, like, cliche statement. But when you think about it, it's so good because my first dog that I had, she had the same thing every single day. And then when she got older, she, I could just, she just seemed old, you Aww, know? Yeah. Um, and with my dogs that I have now, we do so many things. We're all, I'm up for anything. Um, and I, I know so much more about dogs. So I do a better job, but I think we're making more memories and, and they're both nine years old. And I just remember my old dog when she was nine, 
she seemed like an old lady and they're nine and they've got tons of zest for life. So, you know, I can see that doing all of these crazy things <laughs> is worth it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I love that. I love that concept of, of mixing it up for them and making their life adventurous too. I think that's great. Is there anything else at all that you would like to share with listeners today? I, I think that I would just encourage people if you're if you're not on Instagram or not on any social media to come check it out because I would not be doing what I'm doing now if it weren't for social media. I mean, back in the day, it was the people commenting on my blog, but the version of that today is, you know, Instagram or Facebook groups or even TikTok or wh wherever you like to hang out, come and get involved and send personal messages to people and say hi to them because it's going to make their day. And hopefully you'll also develop some, some long friendships yourself. The dog community is just so welcoming and kind, and there's no reason to be nervous about reaching out to people. So just dive in. I remember when I first started doing this a, a while ago, I, I joined Rebecca into like a dozen Jack Russell Facebook groups. It's like, <laughs> why? She gets all these notifications. Why did you add me to all these groups? And now she can just spend hours it's looking at best. all these adorable puppies. <laughs> I'm so glad you did that for me. Thank you. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yes. It really does just bring joy to your life. And like yeah, you said, the community yeah, is agree. so warm and engaging and it's a great place to be. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm a member of a ton of Chocolate Lab Facebook groups, so I definitely understand. <laughs> so Tori, before you go, we have a Zoomies round of questions for you. So they're going to be pretty rapid fire and you just give us your best off the top of your head answer. Okay. Okay. You ready? I, I think so. Okay. okay. Go for it. <laughs> All right. Ice cream in a cone or a dish? Cone. What's your one must have fashion item? Fanny pack. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> book or magazine? Book. Classic book or new release? New release. Cool. What's your favorite dog outfit? Oh, oh my gosh. Um, my dogs, they have these um, wool sweaters that are like, they're like nicer than sweaters that I have. <laughs> um, and I just, I think they just look so cute in them and, but they can only wear them when it's like really, really cold out. So yeah, I love those. Uh, did, did they like, do they like them as much as you do? My dog, so my dog Bert, my, my two labs, I don't know if you guys know about labs, but there's English labs and American labs. Um, Lucy's an English lab. So she's kind of the chunkier thick coat, uh, boxy head and Bert is the American lab. And so he's a little bit slimmer and he his fur is different it's just much funner mm -hmm. he loves wearing the sweaters lucy not so much <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's so cool <laughs> she needs more of a cardigan i think yeah lightweight cardigan. yeah, yeah. well also <laughs> just the english lab she's got such a thick neck and the sweater is just a little constricting and yeah <laughs> so what is your favorite type of cuisine you know what? I'm Italian. I eat Italian food all the time, but I love Thai food. Oh, uh, yes. yes. Us too. Yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite. So that is our Zoomies round. Thank you, Tori, so much for joining us today. It's been an absolute joy talking with you. Yeah. And what are the best places that people can find you and become a member of the Wear Wag Repeat Pack? Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, this was really fun. So my my blog and my website is wearwagrepeat.com. And that's W-E-A-R. Because remember, I was a fashionista back in the day. Uh, and you can also find me on social media, either at Wear Wag Repeat or at T mystic for Tori mystic. Yeah. And, um, you know, I have online courses. I've got an online membership community. I've got an email list, all kinds of different ways to, to keep in touch and learn about pet parenting and being a petpreneur. You can connect with us, our featured dogs of Instagram and Tori mystic of wear wag repeat on this episode, show notes page at jackrussellparents.com slash blog. We'll talk to you again soon. Did you enjoy this episode? Did you learn from the content? Or did you just have a good, relatable laugh? Well, now what? It's time to subscribe, follow, keep listening, and give a positive review on the Apple Podcast app. Then share the podcast with other puppy parents. This will allow us to connect you and your friends with fun, dog-loving content week after week. Until next time, this is Becca and Gabe, the Jack Russell Parents. Say bye, Carson. 
We'd love to connect with you online at jackrussellparents.com or on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at JRT Podcasts. That's at JRT for Jack Russell Terrier Podcast. The Jack Russell Parents Podcast is produced by Earball Audio. Jack Russell Parents is brought to you in part by Super Chewer. From the makers of BarkBox, Super Chewer is a themed monthly delivery of toys and treats made especially for dogs who play harder and demand a challenge. Simply go to jackrussellparents.com and click the Super Chewer link to enjoy their great offers while also supporting our podcast. Mm-hmm.